Well, as you know, it's pretty common in the type community to consider that uh, Hitler was an INFJ. Uh, although, if you kind of try to look underneath the reasons for this view, it seems to have been something that caught on. It was expressed first in some kind of publication, IDR Labs or somewhere else, and people kind of adopted that view. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, part of the reason why that view was adopted is because it seemed attractive uh, for people to consider that Hitler was an INFJ. So I think the idea again is that he was possessed by, you know, obviously unhealthy INFJ, but he was possessed by a vision and that he was he didn't seem to have a particularly extroverted life. And but at the same time that he was able to sway large, very large amounts of people with his charisma and his uh, kind of mystic presence. And I think that for reasons that are probably a bit more elaborate than that, but roughly speaking, that's kind of one of the reasons why uh, Hitler is, is, is seen by many as an INFJ. Um, noting also that INFJ seems to be a popular type <laughs> when it comes to uh, typing dictators that were possessed by an idea. Um, either that or INTJ like Popot and Lenin and, and other ones. And I mean, it makes a certain amount of sense, you know, when you have a particular head of state or dictator or whatever that is possessed by an idea, it is one of the qualities of NI in a certain state of mind to illustrate and manifest that possession. And it's true that certainly true that Hitler was able to sway the masses and that uh, he had a significant, he had a significant kind of magnetism, you know? Uh, now, once this is said, right? Um, it, it turns out that for, I won't go into exactly the context, but I'm reading this book at the moment. It's called by uh, Victor Klemper, The Language of the Third Reich, right? It's actually an analysis of the kind of language that was produced by the Third Reich, and the Nazis in particular, very, very interesting book. But among other things, Klemperer narrates his own experiences of witnessing speeches of the Fuhrer, of, of Hitler himself. So you, you get a very interesting like first-hand account by a man who's extremely articulate and really able to provide like detailed descriptions of um, how things happened and manifested and, and what his impressions were of Hitler himself, right? And honestly, there's two reasons why I think at least it's a challenge to the view that Hitler, Hitler was an INFJ. What I would say is that it's hard for me to imagine that he was not a strong NI user because his vision was precisely um, a glossing over of a huge amount of historical detail in the name of an idealized view of a certain era of the past, the Teutonic Kingdom, to name it, um, articulated around a projection of that past into a future that it has to re-articulate. And that is very NI, you know. And this is, in fact, this is also what I said about uh, the NI of Martin Heidegger. Um, and I is not always like that, but it's often manifest in this way, you know. It has less attention to detail and more globalizing tendencies than SI does in that regard. So strong and I refer for Hitler, I think, is clear. Uh, based on his magnetic charisma and his ability to sway the masses, you don't necessarily think INTJ, okay? But the thing is... Um, I want to say, first of all, the question of introversion versus extroversion. I have doubts as to, Hit as to Hitler, you know, as regards Hitler being an INFJ, because in the same way that I have doubts as regards Jordan Peterson being an INFJ, I just think that to be in the public, uh, in the public sphere and at the top of a particular hierarchy, having like, for all intents and purposes, a 95% public life where what's left to the private is not quite non-existent, but it's left to uh, a tiny little plot of land. You know, it's, it has to be very suffocating for an INFJ. It has to be very um, oppressive. And I just can't imagine an INFJ being able to deal with that. A charismatic INFJ who's able to ex exert an influence from afar, yes. But someone like Hitler, 
you know, and so for a long time I was kind of toying with the idea that he was an ENFJ, you know, and, and, and that seemed to make sense to me with a strong NI function, unhealthy ENFJ, what have you, but an ENFJ. What's interesting about the Klemperer book is that he goes into a lot of detail as to his puzzlement, his great puzzlement, to understand how Hitler did it. How did he manage to make so many people believe in him in this magnetic way? Because apparently that really, really happened during his rallies, during his speeches. And what Klemperer says is that when there's a train that's gonna pass by, it's not gonna last very long, so don't worry about it, but yeah. Uh, so the Klemperer essentially says, like numerous times in the book, that he finds that Hitler's movements, like his way of being, the way he talks, um, it's, it's very kind of, it doesn't have any of the fluidity of what you would expect from an ENFJ or to some extent an INFJ kind of way of presenting themselves, a kind of way of moving about. He, he describes Hitler's movements as kind of very mechanical and very forced, very um, sort of, I don't want to quite say robotic, but you know, like unnatural in the extreme. And um, to me, that suggests that, and like almost as if Hitler was just copying Mussolini and being for some reasons very, even more successful through other qualities of his at some level. But I want, I, it immediately thought, made me think this kind of roughness, this kind of rigidity, um, sounds more like TE. And it led me to think that perhaps actually Hitler was in the NTJ and, and people are not considering the possibility, you know? So I would say, also, you know, all things considered, I don't know what Hitler's type is, except that he was a strong NI user. I would dis discard the INTG hypothesis, but in my top three, INFG will actually be number three. And no doubt many of you will disagree, and that's fine. I, I, I really look forward to seeing your arguments. Um, but I would probably at this stage put, because Klemperer's book convinced me, uh, ENTG number one, ENFG number two, and INFG number three for Hitler, currently. Um, at least I think it's, it's healthy to kind of learn to put ourselves in a position when we don't necessarily think Hitler was an INFG because it's possible he was something else, you know, and I'm inclined to believe so. Now, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. I have in fact written two books on the INFG. So I know a little bit about the type. There is the ecstatic soul, which is about, this is my most recent book about INFG life in the modern world, how to find meaning, purpose and value in a world that is often hostile to us. And it's pretty cool, the ecstatic soul. If I said the ecstatic soul though, this is the infinite soul. But prior to the infinite, there is the ecstatic. Now there's more a look at the energy consciousness and its existential manifestation. So deep investigation of the type. You can get the two books at the links below. Support the channel and they're well reviewed. So take a, have a look, uh, have a glance. And uh, don't forget that this channel also, uh, I can run this channel. I can continue, you know, go. I can, I can keep going with this channel because of your support, your donations through Patreon. So please consider uh, donating to me on Patreon, the link below. You can interact with me there and access some bonus content. And I really thank my supporters because uh, they are the lifeblood of this channel. Uh, don't forget that this book needs reviews as well. So if you've loved it and haven't reviewed it yet, please consider, for referencing purposes, reviewing it. I'll talk to you next time, guys. Take care.